Welcome to Honest News. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Oh, Thank you for your support, Honest News Network. I've been born again. Well, as things are getting more clear and more clear and more clear for those that are purifying themselves, making themselves white, making themselves ready, the world is getting more darker, more darker, and more unclear. Laws are becoming very unclear. Even YouTube concerning COPPA, the FTC, is becoming so unclear. So murky. Just no clear instruction, no clear direction. I think they want to they want to keep it that way. They don't want people to know where they stand. They want to keep them in that state of confusion, that state of unknowing, the unknown. Cuz they can control them that way. They can cause them to live in fear. Right? If people don't know what their rights are or what their the laws are, even concerning marijuana. You don't know what the laws are concerning that. Not that it affects you and I, but it's just interesting how the world is just getting more and more unclear. And it's going to continue to. But what is abundantly becoming clearer and clearer is that you and I need to be making our escape. Amen. We need to be getting ready. We need to be looking up and getting ready to leave this world. This world's passing away. Amen. The world is passing away. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, if you'd like to follow in the reading of God's Word. I don't know what it is, but I can't seem to get away from this number 24. I don't know if you all noticed, but in the last message we shared about the false Christ arising was in chapter 24 of verse 24. <laughs> it's Praise the Lord. I don't know if it has any meaning at all, but 24 means a lot. It has to do with the elders, the overcomers, the bride of Christ. Uh, I do want to also mention this. Um, I don't know how many noticed this or not, but in the message previously dealing with the false Christs arising, I had said in that message that Jesus did not say there would be many false prophets. And I'm wrong about that. He did say, just a few verses before the chapter we were in, where we were dealing with, in verse 11, I believe, of chapter 24 of Matthew, uh, he did say that many false prophets shall arise. But he didn't say, as many false Christs shall arise. So I wanted to clear that up. Um, I believe the Lord again has something for us today. If we will pay attention, if we will listen, pay attention. Matthew 16, verse 24 
Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man, if any man, God's no respecter of persons. There's nobody on this earth that gets to bypass the cross. Amen? If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If any man. Amen? Doesn't matter what your title is. Doesn't matter how much money you've got. If any man will come after me, Jesus said. Let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for giving us clear direction, clear instruction. You give us a clear message. We don't have to scratch our heads and wonder what's going on, Lord. We know your word clearly lets us know where we are and what we should be doing. We ask that you bless and anoint this message as we minister your word, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Any man will come after me. Let him deny himself. Why did Jesus say it that way? Let him deny himself. Because you don't have to. It's your choice. Amen? But Jesus is making it abundantly clear that if you're going to follow him, that there are conditions to be met. You must deny yourself, and you must take up your own cross. Amen? He goes on to say, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Now listen to what he says next. Pay attention. For what is a man profited? if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Think about that. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul. Jesus is asking two questions, but the second question is to clarify the first question, to confirm the first question, to make it even more clear. What is a man profited? What has he really gained if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What Jesus is saying is, in order for you to lose your soul, listen, well, I should say, in order for you to gain the world, you would have to lose your soul. That's what Jesus is saying. A person that has the goal of gaining the world, the whole world, would have to lose their soul to do it. Remember what uh, Satan offered Jesus? I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. All you got to do is bow down to me. Right? So that's why Jesus says this in two different ways. What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? In other words, 
You would have to give something to gain the whole world. And that would be your soul. Amen. You've heard it said in Hollywood, I, I sold my soul to the devil. Amen. You've heard him say it. I sold my soul to the devil. That's what they're talking about. Whether they understand there's a real devil or not, or understand that there is a real Satan, or they're saying that the world or that the industry is their God, and they've sold their soul to the industry for money, for fame, for fortune. Amen. What do you give in exchange for, you, for fame, fortune, for wealth? That's what Jesus is saying. You would give your soul in exchange for those things but you would lose it. You would lose your soul. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. But whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Now, let's look and see what Mark recorded that Matthew didn't. Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Jesus is reminding them when he comes in his glory, in his power, when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels, none of those things that you sold your soul for are going to matter. They're not going to matter. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord's really been dealing with me lately about the reality the reality, people. When I've been reading the Bible lately, Jesus saying things, it makes you clearly understand. And your flesh rises up and says, who does he think he is? Your flesh will fight the truth. Who does he think he is? To say that he has the final word. Amen. Oh, yeah, your flesh will say those things if you're listening. Who does he think he is? Well, let me remind you, he's God. <laughs> he's God, people. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I know. So many still see him in a manger. And in the month of December, they'll all be singing about him in the manger. Huh? All, they'll be putting out their fake little mangers and, dear God, wake up! 
Dear God, wake up! He's coming! In the glory of his Father, with the holy angels. Are you listening? He's coming. And it says he's going to give rewards. Listen to what it says. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. This is the very thing I was reading when my flesh said, who does he think he is? Let me read it to you again. Maybe your flesh will say it. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. You might say, what right does he have to give me a reward based on my works. See, a lot of folks don't know who he is. They still see him either in a manger or they still see him on the cross, like the Catholic Church still sees him on the cross. But they certainly don't see him sitting at the Father's right hand. Amen? They certainly don't see him sitting on the right hand of power. Amen. They certainly don't see him coming in power and great glory with the saints in his wrath. Every day, it seems, God quickens Brother Joseph to bring this message to remind his people Jesus is coming. He's coming. His eyes like flames of fire. Out of his mouth goeth a two-edged sword. Are you listening? He was going to smite the nations. You've got to stop seeing Jesus in this limited way. Seeing Jesus limited. Amen? He's unlimited. He's unlimited. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's all-powerful. He listening? He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. Hallelujah! And he's coming in power, in great glory. Hallelujah! That ought to make you and I lift up our heads and rejoice, amen? But for those that are not ready, that do not love his appearing, they're not looking forward to him coming. Amen? We need to be ready. Amen? We need to be looking up. Our redemption is drawing near, and it's getting closer every single day. Oh, yeah. Praise God. I was singing a song last night. So guide my steps along the way as I travel down here below. Hallelujah. Praise God. Feel the presence of the Lord. That's the way you are. So guide my steps along the way. 
as I travel down here below. And when I come to the end of my days, Lord, take me home. Lord, take me home. Guide my steps along the way as I travel down here below. When I come to the end of my days, Lord, take me home. Oh, Lord, Take me home. Praise God. I'm nearer home than I was yesterday. I'm near to my God. Long life's pilgrim way. Each prayer I pray each step I take, I'm nearer home than I was yesterday. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in this place And my soul does burn within me I feel Jesus in this place Praise God. Thank God for the anointing. Amen. Thank God for the real anointing. The true anointing. The anointing that destroys the yoke. Praise the Lord. Where the oppressed can be freed. Amen. If you're oppressed, if you're depressed, the anointing can destroy that oppression on you. Amen. There's a power greater than the power of the devil. I know the devil wants to convince you that there's not a power greater than his power. Amen. But there's a power greater than the power of the devil. Praise the Lord. There's hope. There's deliverance. There's healing. There's salvation. There's hope for the hopeless. I know the devil wants people to think he's got them. They're prisoners. And there's nobody that can break them free from the power of the devil, but there's a power greater than the power of the devil, brothers and sisters. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. There's a power greater than the power of the devil. Oh, yes. Praise the living God. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He came to set the captives free. He went about doing good, healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil. This same Jesus 
is returning. This same Jesus is returning. Blessed be his name, people. Don't forget Jesus. Don't let the devil cause you to forget him. Amen? He's alive, glory to God. He's sitting at the Father's right hand, interceding for you and I that shall be heirs of righteousness, heirs of his kingdom. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord, brothers and sisters. It's not going to be long. We're going to be with him. It's going to be worth it all. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. It's going to be worth it all. These light afflictions are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Amen. Blessed be his name, people. He is. He is the blessed. He is the one. He is the only one. Praise God. And we can have a life in him. In him. Amen. Outside of him is misery. Outside of him is confusion, darkness. Amen. But if your life is hidden in God, in God the Father, in Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus, hidden, hidden in him. In him we live, we move, we have our being. Praise God. In him we live. In him we live. We move, we have our being. Don't venture outside of God. Don't venture outside the truth. There's nothing but darkness, confusion, misery, emptiness, lies, deception, death, hell and destruction. Only in Him is there safety. Only in Him is there deliverance. Only in Him is there eternal life. Amen. Blessed be His name. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Glory to God. Look up, people. Look up. Straighten up. Amen? Look up. Lift up your heads. Our redemption is getting closer. the power in the name of Jesus we've got thank you for your support of honest news network in the name of the lord though satan rages we cannot be defeated we've got the power